Welcome to episode 13 of our Comfy UI tutorial series. Today I want to show you how to install and run the Alama tool and how you can test different large language models inside Comfy UI with its help. This way you can generate prompts from your instructions or even from images. First, we need a tool to manage all those large language models. So go to the Alama.com website. As you can see, it can manage all kinds of models like Llama, Phi, uh, Mistral, and Lava. Uh, if you want to learn more about it, there's a docs section that links to the GitHub page. You'll also find more uh, links here for a quick start and additional resources. Back on the Olama site, you have the download button where you can choose your operating system. Mine is Windows, so I'll click download for Windows. I'll save it on my desktop for now, and let's see how we install it. The icon features a cute llama. Just double click on it, and then click install and wait for it to finish. Once it's installed, you can see the Llama icon in the notification area that indicates it is running. If you want to close Alama, right click there and choose quit. It's important to know this as it can use up some VRAM so you can close it when you're not using it. And then to start Alama again, find it in your apps by clicking on start and searching for Alama. Now, if I click on it, it might seem like nothing happened, but Alama has started as we can see the icon with the Alama in the notification area. Back on the Alama website, we have a section for models. If I click on it, we can find different models here, such as Llama, Gemma, Mistral, and so on. Lots of options to choose from. The top search is a little better than the filter below, so if I search for vision, for example, I can find models that can interpret an image and provide a description or caption for it. If I search for Gemma, I can see different variations of that model. If I go back to the models, we can also filter them by newest or uh, popular. Here are some popular models. Let's say I want to install and test Gemma. I can see different versions available. If I click on it and scroll down, I can read more information about it. Here you can see different versions, but to see all, you need to click on uh, view more. As you can see, it has all kinds of sizes. Usually the larger models are smarter, but it also depends on how many parameters they are trained on. For example, 2B means 2 billion parameters. So 7B has 7 billion parameters, which allows it to handle more complex tasks, but requires more processing power. If I select the 7B version, I see a command on the right to install that model. If I choose a different model, like 2B instruct Q4, um, the command changes. I can click on this icon to copy that command. Then I click start, type CMD, and select command prompt. Here I can paste the command I just copied and press enter. This will pull all the information and models it needs to run. This model has less than two gigabytes so it should run quickly, but it isn't as smart as some other models. However, there is also a Gemma version 2 that seems to be better. Once the model finishes installing, we get a prompt asking us to send a message. As suggested, you can type a message to get help, and it gives some command suggestions like forward slash by for exit. The forward slash help command also works to show all those commands we can communicate with the model right here. So if I type hi and hit enter, it will respond. It's nice to interact with the model, but the interface is kind of basic. There are graphical interfaces like Open Web UI, but today I'll focus on using it uh, inside Comfy UI. I'll use forward slash by to exit. If you use the command Alama list, you can see all the models you have installed. As you can see, I have a few gigabytes here which can take up a lot of space on your hard drive. So if you want to remove models you don't use anymore, select the name of the model you want to remove, like stable prompt, for example. Then use Control plus C to copy that name. Type Alama followed by RM, which stands for remove, paste the model name and press enter. That model will be removed. If I run the list again, you can see it's not in the list anymore. I'll close this window and now let's go to Comfy UI. Let's go to the manager and then to custom notes. 
search for Olama and install the Comfy UI Olama node by this user. Click install and wait for it to finish. Then you can click restart and OK. We can close this tab now since a new window will open. Clear the canvas using the clear button, then double click on the canvas and search for Olama. Select the Olama generate node. This one has a text output called response and we can add a show any node from comfy easy use custom nodes. Here you can add your instructions or text. For example, if I say hi and run it, I get this response. This is using the URL that points to Olama running in the background. If I copy this link and paste it in the address bar, you can see it says Olama is running. So we need Olama to be running to use the models. You can give all kinds of instructions like in chat GPT. Now it's not always perfect. It depends on how smart the model is and how many billion parameters it has, but it's free and you can choose a model that fits your computer's power, allowing us to generate prompts with it. Let's delete the Olama generate node and add another one called Olama generate advanced. Um, this one has more options. Connect the response output to the show any node. Don't use the context output as that will give a bunch of numbers. Now here we have the instructions for what we want to do. And at the top, we can place our prompt. Uh, when we run this, it will interpret that prompt using the instructions. You can try all kinds of instructions to see what works best for you. I also tried generating some instructions with ChatGPT. I will post these long instructions for generating a prompt that works well most of the time, though it depends on the model. When I was trying to get the prompt to start with the type of image, I mentioned watercolor to see if it would start with that. However, I need to try it with some larger models for better results or to play with settings. Let's try this version to see if it works better. From here, you can take, for example, the 7B version which is better, or look at Gemma version 2 oh, with 7 billion parameters. But just to show you how to add another model, I'll demonstrate with this 2B version, which I think is similar to uh, the Q4 version, though I'm not sure. Anyway, copy the command, go to start, search for CMD, and uh, open the command window. Paste the command and wait for it to install, then close it with the command by, or just close the window. Now back in Comfy UI, it doesn't appear here. If I try to refresh, I get undefined model. So you can either restart Comfy UI, add the node again, or right click and choose fix node, which will recreate that node with default values. There are ways to make it more accurate if you want to experiment. For example, if I take a screenshot of this node and go to ChatGPT and paste that screenshot, it only works with a premium subscription, by the way, so I can ask about what those options mean, like top K, temperature, keep alive, and so on. I can also ask what settings to change to get a more accurate prompt for stable diffusion. Here's what was suggested. To lower the value of top K and top P and decrease the temperature, among other adjustments. You can play around with these settings to see if you can find better options. Let me add the Gemma 7 billion parameter model as well. You know the drill, copy the command and run that in the command window. Back in Comfy UI, it doesn't appear since it was open, so I'll just right click and recreate the node. Uh, now I have that 7B version there. I will paste the instructions and then change the prompt. And uh, this one works much better. I'll probably find even better versions after I finish the video. So make sure to check Discord to see what people have found that works best. I had a problem with the Discord link. So the invite link from the header where you usually subscribe to the channel should work fine. Um, let's remove this uh, node and add one called Olama Vision. Uh, we can connect the description output to the show any node. And then on the left, we can add a load image node. We had something similar in episode 11. Uh, now, when I run this workflow, it says it is not able to access external information or visual content. So this model is good for text, but cannot read images. Let's find a model that can do that. 
let's search the Olama website for the word vision. Here, I mean, you can find a lot of vision models that can interpret an image, but many of those are variations of the lava model. Uh, if you want a smaller model, you can try something like Lava Phi 3, for example. Um, you can read the description. There are more versions, um, like the Spenzi version, so let's test it to see how it works. Run that command in the command window, then back to Comfy UI, restart Comfy UI, or recreate that node. Now we can select that model from uh, the list. When we run it, we get a, a, a description of the image. I can ask questions about that image, like what color the cube is. Let's try with a different image like this portrait. I can ask about her hair, so I can use that simple describe the image instruction and I will get a prompt. The better the model, the better the prompt will be. Let me try a bigger model like the lava one. I will try the 7 billion parameter version, which has almost five gigabytes. Copy the command and install it using the command window. If I run the Olama list command, you can see I've already tested a few and need to try even more when I get more time. If you find some really good models, let me know in the comments or on Discord. Back to Comfy UI, let's recreate the node so we have access to the model we just downloaded. I will select it from the list and test it. The result is a really detailed prompt. Now, this Olama Vision node doesn't seem to have a seed function, so if I try to run it multiple times, the prompt doesn't change unless I change the photo or the instruction. What you could do is add a space or a comma in the description so the instruction changes. Um, that way it will let you generate another prompt. As you can see, it generated this long prompt. If you want another prompt, change the instruction again by deleting the space you added or adding another space or anything else that changes it. Um, if you know a better way, let me know. Um, for more prompt models, not vision, but those you use for text, you can also try the Phi version, like Phi 3 Mini, which are quite small. Um, depending on your video card, you can also try to integrate it with a workflow. For SDXL models, it worked quite well for me, but on the Flux model, it struggled. So let's add the Alama Generate node. Let's use a normal model, not a Vision 1, like Gemma 7 in this case. And then I will add a Show Any node just to see what prompts it generates. Now, if we try to connect the positive prompt, we cannot. So we need to add that input. Right click, select Convert Widget to Input, and then Convert Text to Input. Now we can connect the Olama Generate to that node. Let's add some custom instructions and then a prompt that will use those instructions. The result is this cute bunny. Um, I will paste those long instructions for the prompt generator and let's try again. Now it's more detailed. We can add more information to the prompt to see if it can improve it. Uh, now we have more information there about the style as well. The result is quite nice. Let's see if it knows <laughs> how to do a watercolor. Um, by the way, Flux models don't know as many art styles as the SDXL models, so I hope they will fix the model in the future. Let's try a 3D render also, and it seems to know how to do it, so it can be quite useful. Um, let's try another one on a black background, and it seems to work okay. Gemma 7B might be too big for some video cards, so try smaller models if your video card cannot handle both or just generate prompts first, paste them in a text file, then shut down the Olama app from notifications, and you can use your workflow normally since running both Olama and Comfy UI at the same time can take more resources. Here I converted the system field, the one we use for instructions, to a text input so I can add a positive node and connect it to that input. Then it will work the same, but you have a bigger window where you can work more easily on your instructions if you change those more often. I will post my long instructions here. You can see I tried to guide it so it knows uh, how to prompt better for stable diffusion and it worked okay most of the time.
the result is this bunny. Now, let's delete all these nodes so we can test the vision models as well. Add the Alima vision node, then the load image node where we load our image and then a show any node so we can see what prompts it generates. Now let's connect it to the workflow. For the model, we need to change it to one of those vision models. So I will go with the lava model. Now it describes that image and uses it as a positive prompt generating an image based on that prompt. In this case, it worked quite well. Let's try it with a portrait. Uh, I got a nice result with the, the portrait, but I wanted a darker background. So let's change the instruction by adding a space to generate a, a new prompt. I tried a few times, but had problems identifying that background color, um, probably because I saw some lights there in the background. I thought, why don't I add a black background in the instruction? So I added, make the background black. And um, in this case, it worked how I wanted. Uh, the, the images are quite similar. Let's try a vector illustration of the cat. Um, this one worked okay now, but it didn't work all the time. Um, sometimes I had to specify in the instructions that I wanted it in vector art style. For the anime image, I got a photo image instead, even though anime was mentioned in the prompt. For that, Flux is better at understanding prompts, but it recognizes fewer art styles compared to SDXL. So I added more anime related words in the instructions to guide it to what I wanted. In the end, adding anime, 2D, and chibi seemed to help achieve the results I wanted. This is how the final workflow for SDXL looks. Um, you have some ideas for instructions and models here. What I want to show you is um, how to easily move parts of this workflow to another existing workflow. So for example, if I want to use these four nodes, I select them by holding control, then right click on the canvas and choose save selected as template. You can give it a name like Alama vision or something you'll remember. Um, now we can open another workflow like this Schnell one, for example. Um, for dev, it worked really slowly for me. Maybe it's too much for both Alama and Flux Dev. Anyway, now if we right click and go to node templates, we can select those saved nodes and add all of them to this workflow. If I hold shift, I can move them all together where I want them. Now remember, we can't connect directly. We need to convert text to input and now it lets us connect. That's all. Now we have the Alama vision in this workflow. As you can see, it runs uh, for Flux Dev. It got stuck at 5% in K sampler many times, but this one worked okay this time. It missed some details, so I will add them in the instructions to help it get a better description, and it worked acceptably. Now, for those big workflows that take a lot of time, I prefer to first generate the prompts or text using a small workflow. Then I copy that text to a text file and load the Flux workflow to try those prompts. With these workflows, you can give custom instructions and text so you can either have some fun, like asking it to act like a pirate, or you can request a story with the same instruction, whether it's about a pirate or any character you want. I also use it for generating ideas. Uh, before I create any prompt, I ask for a list of ideas to see what I could uh, try. If I like an idea, I can load a Flux workflow and shut down the Alama app. Alternatively, I can add a prompt generator workflow to get a better prompt, uh, allowing for more creativity. Um, so I have created a workflow specifically for getting prompts from images where you can try larger models to see what works uh, and get a more accurate image descriptions. Um, then you can close that and the Alama app uh, and use Flux Dev to generate an image. A heartfelt thank you to everyone who joined as YouTube members. A special shout out to the legends for all your support, as well as to the VIP and other members on Discord who helped this channel thrive. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like or a comment. Thank you again and have a fantastic day.